For over three quarters of a century, Jaguar has made some of the most gorgeous cars on the road, and that's just as true now as it ever was. With me today is the man responsible for the look of the company's current lineup, Jaguar Design Director Ian Callum. Uh, I got to ask you, and you're in town to show us you do 200 mile per hour F-Type SVR. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, I got to ask you, anytime you read a car review or article about Jaguars, everybody always refers to its feline style or its cat-like stance. As the guy who actually is in charge of designing these, is that actually in your head? Are you trying to make them look like a cat or have the essence of a cat? Or is this just something that no, needs to I, stop? No, I, I think it just happens. You yeah. know? I don't think about it when I'm designing the cars. I just want something that's beautiful and elegant. And cats are quite beautiful and elegant anyway, so I think they come out. And uh, when we create something that has that reference, it's coincidence, really. We don't think about it. But it's a nice one to have. Yeah. Really. It's, <laughs> yeah. Now, I want to ask you about the new car. This is the F-Type SVR. The F-Type came out a couple of years yep. ago. Uh, this is the hottest version yet, again, 200 mile per hour. Uh, when you designed that first F-Type, and your, your designs are very kind of simple, very elegant. This one gets a little crazier, a little rougher. Yeah. Uh, when you design that first one, are you setting up for this? Do you know you're going to do this eventually? Or do you get the first one right and then say, okay, what, what can we do with that now? We focus entirely on what we're doing at the time. You know, getting the first one right is so important. And uh, that's what we focused on. I knew this car would probably come along, but we'll deal with that when the time comes. And it's all about physics. You know, a car like this is doing 200 miles an hour. It's all about physics. And what you have to bow to the fact that you have to design it around the physics of the car. And I'm happy with that. I love the idea that the shape has been developed in the wind tunnel, so to speak. And there's something very honest and uh, very integral about that. It's quite enjoyable. And you've got to balance the aerodynamics, both making it streamlined and giving it some downforce, and then also how the car, the engine, the brakes are cooled, the engine breathes. Uh, is, is that harder than just designing the car from the first part? Yeah, it is, because you just you, you hit the nail on the head, really, because it's about downforce. It's important. When you're doing 200 miles an hour, you want that car to be stable. It's also about CD, which is about aerodynamics, and not always in keeping with each other. You know, you can get a great CD, a, a low drag, but the, the downforce might not be there. And that balance is very, very difficult. And then we've got the cooling of the car as well. You've got to get the ambient air out of the car as well. So we've got these bonnet vents and hood vents, and all that stuff really matters. And, but it's really nice to be led that way by something other than just your own thoughts, something much more, uh, much more practical. When you look at that coupe, you know it's a current Jaguar, just the same as when you look at one of your sedans, you know it's a current Jaguar. What are the key elements of the design that link them together? Uh, a couple of things, really. You know, I, I went through this study when I started off at Jaguar to really work out what I thought was instinctive. And part of the thing is exaggeration and beauty. So in a Jaguar, if you think, look back in history, everything was slightly exaggerated. It was either longer or lower or wider or the wheels were bigger. And that's what we look for in a Jag, is to make it ex visually exciting. And it's all about proportion. You know, every designer harkens on about proportion all the time, but we really go the, the last mile to get that right. And then the lines have to be very easy to look at. You know, I'm not there to explain them to anybody who's looking at it. They want to see that for themselves. Very beautiful, simple lines that are just a joy to look at. That's what I look for in a Jag. Now, you've done your first SUV, utility vehicle crossover, whatever we're calling them these yeah. days. The new F-Pace goes on sale pretty soon. Uh, was that much harder to bring into the Jag that, Yeah, that was the most difficult job I have ever done. You really? know, the first ones we did, I was looking at them, and I, I said to the team, I said, this is not looking like a Jag. It looks like an SUV, but it doesn't look like a Jag. You know, and I said, come on, let's look at what we've got already. So we put a, 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 an F-Type in the studio. I said, guys, this is what a Jag is about. So we started to emulate a lot of what the F-Type's got, and the car slowly evolved into the right car that you see today. And, and it works. It really does work. And the most flattering thing I had when we showed the car, first of all, at the Motor Show and, and back in Europe, um, the journalist said, it looks like a Jag, which is what I wanted to hear. And it really does look like a Jag. But it's an SUV. It's tall. You get five people in it and lots of luggage. Don't hear that very often. <laughs> Maybe one of the station wagons we don't get to uh, enjoy you, here in America. You don't anymore. get the station wagon, the sport <laughs> brake, which is a real shame, actually, because it's a beautiful car. Yeah, yeah, but now over in Europe, you like the crossovers and the SUVs, so I think we might have won on that uh, front. Yeah, they're everywhere now, though, aren't they? I think the world just loves SUVs. I mean, that's just a fact of life. A few years ago, you did a mid-engine supercar yeah. concept, the CX-75. Didn't go into production, but it did make a cameo in the latest James Bond film, Spectre. Uh, have you thought about supercars since then? I mean, if you, if you were to do a new one now, would it look anything like that? Or do you have a whole different view well, of what a supercar now or in the next couple of years might 
do if you Yeah, you know, I mean, to. the world's probably going to go electric in the next 10, 15 years. And I often think about what would you do. I mean, that car was half electric anyway. Mm -hmm. It gives a lot of freedom. So would it be different? I often think about it. I'm always sketching supercars. It's a natural domain of designers to design mid-engine cab forward cars. And yeah, I think it looks slightly different. It would look slightly different. I'm not quite sure how it would look, but um, if we're to do one now, it'd probably be a little bit more avant-garde. But that was a beautiful car. It was a nice car. When you start with a new car, you and your team, do, do you sketch them first or do you go to the computer first? No, we sketch them. Yeah. Pencil and paper. That's all we need. And then that evolves into digital renderings, which evolve eventually into digital models, which evolve into clay models. And we still do clay models. Everybody still does clay models, so we can really sculpt the form both inside and outside. I've got a pen and a pencil yeah, I saw right that. here. Yeah. You up for a challenge? I'm up for a challenge. Ten seconds, draw yep. me a cool looking car. Okay. All right, here we go. Hold on. We got a clock here. Let's do it. Go. There you go. Ten seconds. Wow. I like it. Looks like that CX-75. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> New ideas. Maybe the Jaguar of the future we're looking at Maybe. here. Could be electric. Could be electric. Hydrogen. Anything. Maybe. I like the V6s with the superchargers. Okay. The V8s as well. We'll put one in there for you then. Excellent. We'll, uh, we'll get on the uh, order list there. Ian Callum, Director of Design for Jaguar, thanks so much for joining us today. And you can see his latest creation at the New York Auto Show, which is going on this and next week here in New York. If you want to read about it, head on over to autos.foxnews.com. I'm Gary Gastelou. Thanks for watching.